Hello, Marketing good morning, good afternoon, Department. good evening. Uh, welcome in the next webinar of Learn Grasshopper Live. Uh, as always, uh, just uh, let uh, leave a comment if you can hear us and uh, see us well. Uh, good afternoon, Nathan. Hello, Nathan, can you hear me? Hi, how are we? <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Hi, uh, we are. Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we we are live. So we have already some people uh, waiting already 146 minutes. So we will start in just three minutes. Uh, three minutes, we will start live. Uh, so just uh, write on the chat. Uh, if you ever used uh, Grasshopper or Idea Statica, and so are you a Grasshopper user, or maybe you are a Statica user that never heard about Grasshopper or Rhino? So just leave in the chat. Uh, we have also Paul uh, that you can uh, also uh, answer your question. How are you doing, Nathan? Oh, yeah. we we lost the uh, connection with uh, Nathan, but yeah, I think he will uh, he will come back uh, shortly. So still, we have some two three minutes. So take your water, take your uh, coffee. Uh, we have some people. Uh, hi, Federico uh, from Brazil. Uh, we have Tobias. Hi, Tobias. HD. Yes, we increased the uh, to HD resolution. Uh, so we can hear it. Uh, we have Nathan come back, so that's good. Uh, let me see uh, here. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Sorry about that. <laughs> good, good, good to have you. You just uh, took some water and coffee, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let me see, uh, Anna. Uh, hi, Anna. I have used Grasshopper. Can you tweak a little bit about implementation these uses in small scales design? Uh, actually, we are going to talk about uh, small designs with Nathan as well. Uh, let me see. We have Anthony. Uh, we have Mohamed. So yeah, lots of lots of people today. So you are yeah, based in uh, Europe, right, Nathan? Right now, you are visiting cold winter Europe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm in uh, Bruno, uh, Czech Republic right now. That's the uh, headquarters of Idea Statica. So uh, I'm actually based in Melbourne, but um, come here a couple of times a year to to meet up with the team and, and sort of um, discuss all these these different topics. So it's good to be here. It's good to be uh, not 2 a.m. in the morning. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, without any jet lags and without any uh, evening uh, lives, uh, what was the temperature difference uh, between uh, Melbourne? You are based in Melbourne, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's about 20 degrees different at the moment, I think. <laughs> OK, not that bad, not that bad. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> Uh, okay, we are starting in 35 minutes. Uh, we have also Adam uh, with us, uh, Adam from Idea Statica. So if you have any questions, uh, we have also support here. Adam is uh, uh, from the technical uh, team of Idea Statica. So if you have any question, if you are Idea Statica user, so of course, uh, Nathan will try to answer, but we have also Adam on the chat, so he will uh he will help us too we have emre okay lots of people here good uh everything is working all the streams so let's go uh yeah we have lots of idea statica users uh, but also like like stefano is using already idea statica and grasshopper but today i think he will also benefit from this webinar i seen already nathan presentation so it's it's going to be a lot of practical uh stuff uh, all right, so we are live on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So if you are watching on one of these platforms, as always, just leave a like, uh, subscribe to our channels. It will help you to reach more people and yeah, produce more of uh, these webinars and invite great guests like, uh, like Nathan. Uh, about today's presentation, so it will be one hour, of course, if it will be more questions, so we will try to stay a little bit longer, but session time is about 40 minutes, Q&A &A, uh, session after 20 minutes, but if you have any questions already, 
So you can just write on the chat. So we will try to put it on the screen and answer. Uh, already seen some question about the recording. Yes, it will be available on our uh, platforms. Uh, and uh, together with recording, you will get the presentation. And Nathan also promised to provide some grasshopper files, right? A little bit yep, about so. a spatial connection. All the, yeah, all so the we files will deliver that. that will be available, yep. Yeah, so we will send it so we can still register. Uh, uh, if you haven't still haven't got any email from me, so you can still register on learngrasshopper.com slash idea statica. And as always, write your comments and questions. We are together with uh, Adam. So here is a comment for Adam, the customer care team of idea statica. So we are here to help you. Uh, okay, three benefits of joining this webinar. So first, we'll uh, deeper understanding of what is Idea Statica, a little bit about the software, and Nathan will uh, will introduce it, and and afterwards get inspired about the project and examples how we can use Grasshopper to actually connect different softwares and uh, automate our design, and as I said, uh, some Grasshopper files so you can already train and practice after this uh, workshop. Uh, OK, so let's start it. Without further ado, optimizing structural connection, uh, we'll talk about idea statica uh, and integration with Grasshopper. Uh, just two words about me. My name is Krzysztof Wojcław. Uh, now I'm based in uh, Poland. Uh, I'm a structure designer, been working uh, as a bridge designer for 10 years. Uh, Two years ago, I decided to go 100% on YouTube and learn and creating learning uh, materials. So now I'm uh, I'm having my own educational platform and teaching actually engineers how to start with Grasshopper and parametric design. I'm also connected with academia. So I'm an academic lecturer at the Norwegian University and also at the Global Master Program at Ziggurat. OK, but this, is a, uh, uh, this was short about me. And today we have Nathan Flo from Idea Statica. He came from Australia to Czech Republic, but not because of this webinar. They have some integration, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, so today, without any jet lags, uh, without uh, evening uh, webinars, uh, here we can uh, start it. So if you, Nathan, can share your screen in the meanwhile, uh, so we can start your presentation, uh, introducing a little bit what is actually idea, idea Statica. Uh, we had some already comments that people never heard about it, so maybe just a few words uh, so we can uh, start it. And Nathan, have you shared your screen? Uh, I have. I think you have you, I think you have to check it, uh, share it one more, uh, one yep. more time. Uh, hi, Ahmed from Nigeria. Uh, we have also Shantum. Uh, I think I pronounced it correct. OK, so let's uh, let's start it. So the the floor is your, Nathan. Hi, thanks, Chris. And uh, I guess thanks for having me today. And uh, thanks for your uh, for your platform. I think when I Got, first got started in um, in Grasshopper. I was always uh, looking for something like what you've what you started to produce here. So uh, thanks a lot for having me, and it's it's actually an honour. So uh, a little bit about myself, where I came from. I um, I'm a, a structural engineer um, trained. Uh, I worked as a structural engineer for about eight years um, uh, in uh, in Melbourne and also in London with Bureau Hapold. Um, I was working at Geometry Gym. A lot of you guys who know Grasshopper probably know Geometry Gym, um, and I was lucky enough to work with him for, for three years. Um, and now we've been working with Idea Statica for uh, just over two years as a, a BIM and API uh, specialist and also work in the, the product development team. So hence why I'm in uh, Czech Republic at the moment. Um, and just a little bit about Idea Statica for those of you who haven't heard of the company. Um, basically, we work in the, the realm of structural details. Um, so uh, anything related to steel connections, um, uh, concrete D regions, and, and also, I guess, um, general, general members. Um, so we have a range of products, which I'll briefly touch on. 
Um, we have about um, 10,000 desktop um, licenses um, and mul many more users. Um, a lot of all our software is verified by universities. Um, and we also, uh, the team I work with is um, developing um, CAD links and, and links with your programs to, to get those forces and stuff in um, quickly into, into our applications. So the main application we have is um, Ideostatic Connection. And what it allows is the automated um, generation of a, a, a quick FEA, FEA analysis um, to perform a component-based um, finite element modeling of, of a connection with basically any geometry, any loading you can think of. Um, the FEA model is, is automatically created. And then we also produce uh, what we call a component-based design. So we re, um, uh, go back from the FEA analysis design all the bolts, all the welds, all the plates uh, to code um, very quickly. If you have tried to design a connection like this by hand, this could take mm. you a couple of days. Yeah, um, it's a difficult stuff, right? And we can kind of give you, you know, you feedback uh, with, with uh, in our connection software, we can sort of do that um, quite quickly. You can design a, a, a connection uh, very quickly and uh, get, I guess, uh, feedback. My realm is the connection modeling. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, today, mainly. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that connection design, we, we can perform all types of um, analysis. We just do you know, stress strain analysis, but also buckling, stiffness. We also do fire design, fatigue, um, and other types of analysis on, on connections as, as well. So once we've built that model, we've got a lot of different analysis types. Uh, we also have a member application, which is um, uh, works similar to uh, the connection application, but here you can kind of introduce connections in when you're trying to design a more uh, 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 members of sort of any geometry with holes and stuff like that, um, and start to perform these types of analysis as well. Um, uh, geometric nonlinear um, types of analysis on these, um, on these members. Um, and we also, we mainly talk about steel, but we also have a lot of um, concrete apps. Um, so we have um, RCS, Reinforced Concrete Section, which um, basically allows um, section checks, uh, code-based calculations um, for um, reinforced concrete sections, pre-stressed, uh, post-tension concrete sections. Um, we have our beam um, application as well. And we also have, um, our detail application, which is uh, basically for any geometry of wall loading um, or those uh, really uh, those D regions of concrete elements with holes and stuff like that. Um, so we can all uh, do full reinforcement designs of, of those types of um, structures. And I can imagine that you can also check all the uh, for, with the Euro codes and American codes, right? Uh... Yeah, exactly. So in detail, uh, all the the um, concrete apps are all for Eurocode. Um, with detail, we have um, Eurocode, and we also have um, the American code as well. So we can, um, uh, in detail, we can design for for the American uh, American code. Um, uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. It was a, it was a question. Is it does also a software allow to compo composite construction? And because you you talked about uh, concrete, you about uh, talked about steel. What about the composite? Uh, not at the moment. No, okay. it's 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 either a steel member or a um, or a concrete member in the in the member application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adam can uh, can can give me some more advice on that as well um, um, after. Um, and I just want to do a quick shout out. We um, have just released a new RCS API. So if you if you are have used I guess some of Ideostatica's APIs in the past, then um, we have a lot of users with RCS, and we've just released a new um, API for that. So um, please check that out if you're if you're interested. Mm -hmm. And what I work on, and what I kind of um, in 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 uh, in our team is is the BIM links, um, and the main application we have for for BIM links is our is our Checkbot application. And we kind of like to call this sort of the hub of structural design. 
Um, it basically links in with your existing FEA ap application. Um, it kind of works on top of that. Um, and you can select, you know, whole parts of your structure, bring that into Checkbot and start to use that as a, as a design management. Um, so we have the import, we have sync and, you know, management of your, your connections and members as well. We have about 20, 20 plus and counting links. Um, so if you haven't seen this before, um, this would probably be sort of your more general type workflow um, uh, when you're using Ideastatica um, connection or, or, or BIM integration. So, um, and, and the link and the link with Grasshopper, you are mainly responsible for that one? The link with Grasshopper, yes, is, is um, something that I've kind of developed, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology behind uh, mm -hmm. behind that um, and behind uh, how we develop our checkbot links as well. It's 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 quite um, integrated, I guess I I, I would say, um, mm -hmm. in how we kind of do our interoperability um, at Idea Statica. Um, so, what we use is is what we call our um, Idea Open Model. Um, and there's a lot of, um, I guess, object models uh, being generated in the industry at the moment. Um, and we have had Idea Open Model around for a while, and it's basically our um, object model. And, and we develop it so we can um, obviously import uh, 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 translated information into our um, directly into our applications, basically. So um, it's free, it's open source. Um, and this is what the Grasshopper plugin is is based on, and this is what all our um, links are based on. So any link that goes from any FEA or CAD application to Checkbot creates an an idea open model um, file, and basically that file is just transferred in in XML. So um, I'll show a little bit about that, but it is good to understand um, kind of what's happening um in the background and kind of understand uh how we're transferring data around um, and so this for... idea open model uh, file so you, you say that basically speaking you can uh, read it in every software uh, so sophistic uh, uh dual fam design so every software can uh, read this um uh, extension can't... It can't read it, but what what our aim is to do is to allow the translation from those particular softwares to Idea Statica. So okay. uh, we typically are doing a conversion from that base application to um, Idea Statica using this um, using this file format. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that that's actually a really good lead into to the I guess the next um, the next part is. Uh, the um, SAF structural analysis format as well. So um, we use uh, the the SAF uh, the SAF format. Um, and if you if people aren't aware of what what SAF is, it's uh, basically another open source um, object model for structural analysis to transfer structural analysis models. Um, and uh, we're using this to sort of connect with um, apps such as um, Fem Design and Sophistic. Um, and and SIA um, as well. So we're actually using uh, this this type this this file format um, as well. And I'm going to show that a little bit um, uh, as well in the in the Grasshopper stuff. And I see Caramba 3D is uh, is coming, right? Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to show I'm going to show a little bit um, a little bit about this because I know a lot of people would have been like, well, you know, if you're in Grasshopper. Mm -hmm. I need to connect with Karamba. That's you know that's what I'm using, and I'll, I'll show a little bit how uh, we're using the the, the SAF format to kind of to do those translations as well. So cool. So I guess I'll, I just want to um, briefly talk about the Grasshopper plugin and, and the makeup. Um, so uh, we have kind of two two main um, aspects to it at the moment. The first aspect is this um, idea open model um, components, and and what they uh, basically therefore is to generate um, idea open model. So, if um, we talked about going from an FEA to to um, the idea static application, well, 
instead of say converting to an IOM, we can just create it directly. Um, we can we can um, create it directly in in Grasshopper, and that's what these components are for. They're for importing or creating or modifying um, IDEA Open Model. Um, and the the big power of this or, or our of the the Grasshopper plugin is it is um, it's basically allowing explicit modeling. Um, of these elements, especially for connections such as like plates and bolts, um, welds as well. Um, and um, the big thing here is the, the, the geometric conversion, right? So mm -hmm. from IOM to Rhino, you can view these, these plates, um, you can view the welds, you can, the, you can view, I guess, the bolts and stuff like that and start to build up uh, connection information. Um, and you can do this for free. So Idea Open Model is free. You can generate Idea Open Model for free. You can start to generate these connections or, or whatever you like um, uh, uh, for free. It's open source. Um, and then the second part is the connection API component. So mm -hmm. basically, how do we take an Idea Open Model and create uh, a connection file from it? Um, or what if I want to do something with the uh, with the connection file that I have, um, you know, such as I want to run the calculation, or uh, I want to sort of, you know, import uh, a connection file and do some modifications to it, um, uh, and you know, get production costs or other stuff that's available in the in the connection app. And this this requires an API that connects to the connection app on your computer. So you obviously need a license of um, of Idea Statica for to get that to work, basically. Yeah, and as I said, this uh, idea open model component, so actually you can import that and uh, work for free. So this uh, this components open model and open model create all these components, you can get it for free, just download and just uh, import that from different softwares, right? This connection and work in Rhino. Yeah, exactly. And I'll show a little bit about this um, in some of the examples that, um, mm -hmm. that, I, that, I, that I'm uh, gonna show. So yeah, I'll just I'll just quickly briefly touch on how you can install the the, the plugin. Um, so it's it's basically available uh, through the Rhino package manager right now. Um, it's it's built for Rhino seven, um, but it can be used with Rhino eight. Um, so it's 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 because uh, our API is running um, not quite compatible with Rhino eight. We can we can change it, or there there's that workaround. Um, and there's, there's, when you install it, you all, you get a whole bunch of examples um, uh, with it. Um, and we also do have, I guess, documentation on, on how it's working as well at our, um, at our developer, developer website. Um, so yeah, be um, very keen for anyone to, to jump on and, and download it. And hopefully um, some people from this webinar can, will, will start using it um, after, after the, after the chat. But um, so just before I kind of um, show the examples, I guess I um, want to just briefly touch on some of the ways or the two typical ways that you might use Grasshopper um, for connect for generating, I guess, connection geometry. Um, and we sort of talked about the explicit component geometry and, and that's the power of um, open model. Um, components are, are, um, are based off geometry in space. Um, so all our plates. And you typically might want to create um, a connection purely from IOM when you have when you basically really need like a powerful geometry engine like Rhino and Grasshopper, um, and when it's really hard to I guess position um, plates and stuff in, in space using I guess a UI of, of a of a program, um, and also like if you've got different differing number of of elements in that connection. Um, but the logic is the same. You know that's the power of that's the power of Grasshopper, um, and that's where you know you might want to use, I guess, um, IOM to to generate the whole connection um, in space. Um, and then we also have um, another way of, um, I guess, automating some of the connection components, and that's um, using a template application. So that's where you would. Um, have have a predefined template in Idea Statica, and then you would apply that to, I guess, um, a, a naked connection or or just a member member connection. And I'll I'll show a little I'll show a, a demonstration of this as well. Um, typically applicable where you know you have the same number of members 
in, in the connection and the geometry is not changing that much mm -hmm. um, where you might have different loading and you kind of want to see whether that template applies um, you know under those certain loading conditions or, or something like that so you can say that it's a great way to optimize our structure right yeah exactly so instead of you know opening um, 50 connections and and mm. trying to see whether um you know one's going to work or, or whatnot mm -hmm. i can apply that template to, to those 50 connections automatically and then run the calculation see which one is working see which one isn't mm -hmm. working or, or whatnot um and we'll we'll see some examples of, of that um and the time savings that that you know you can potentially um uh, end up with on some of these examples that sounds like a legit way of working <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I think I might kind of jump to an example um, now and um, just kind of show the, the, this, the workflow that I, or the, the first workflow in terms of um, the explicit um, uh, geometry. Just going to start Grasshopper. So we have some frame structure, right? Yeah. So basically here, um, I know a lot of people probably know um, Karamba, but I've basically got a, a, a Karamba model um, which I've which which I've, I've generated. Um, I've analysed that model, um, and now um, I'm going to show something that the Karamba is developing. It's not quite um, ready at the moment, um, but they have um, now in, in Karamba, uh, well, av available very soon. Um, an export model to to SAF file format. Mm -hmm. So if you have um, if you if you've used the Karamba Idea plugin, um, that was quite um, it's quite uh, focused on c creating Karamba models and sending them to Idea. Um, we're trying to use the SAF format as kind of a more um, software agnostic way to to um, I guess. Um, close the gap with multiple, multiple softwares, basically. So we can actually export this um, a SAF model from Karamba now. And in Idea Statica, or, or save, that, save that to disk, um, and in Idea Statica, um, we have uh, a component where we can, when we, where we can convert that um, SAF file at, to IOM, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here, I'm importing the SAF file, and what comes out is our is our open model, um, open model model, um, and we also have the open model um, results. So these are the results that are stored in SAF. They're converted um, to uh, to our our structural format. Um, what we can do, or what we can start to do, is deconstruct that open model. And it's very similar to how Grasshopper is working typically. And you'll see that in here, we have um, a list of uh, list of connection points um, in the model that we can, we can start to work with. Uh, now, uh, if I, um, uh, and then what also what I can do is start to deconstruct those connection points and I can kind of see, um, how many members that connection has in it, um, or you know whether there's there's plates in that connection, um, bolts, welds as well. Um, at the moment, this has been converted from uh, from the SAF file format, so it's um, it's got just uh, just bare um, connections in there. Um, so what we can um, start to do is basically select which connections we want to. Uh, uh, start to work with. So mm -hmm. um, I've selected the the second and the uh, ninth one here, and I might just create a little uh, sphere so I can kind of see which one I'm uh, working with. Yeah, so you basically would like to just extract two, two of this uh, connection into Idea Statica, right, from Grasshopper Caramba. Yeah, exactly. So. Basically, what I've done here is I've mm -hmm. I've selected um, uh, connection point two and connection point nine, and mm -hmm. I'm going to start to um, generate the connection um, information. So, 
Um, what I can do is I've got the connection point. You can see this, and this is a connection point object. And I can I can get the connected members out of that. Uh, so if I if I look at my connected members, oops, sorry, I was just gonna. If I zoom in, you can kind of see that I, I, mm -hmm. I've selected the connected members in this connection. And what I can do is I can basically sort those connected members um, around, I guess, around a plane so I can start to use them in a, in a, logical, in a logical manner. So uh, what I'm actually doing here is I'm uh, getting the connected member. I'm finding the related member in the model. And then I can deconstruct uh, the member and I can start to get some of the cross-section information out of that. So I might want to use the cross-section information to start to drive some of how I, I um, create the, the connection its, um, itself. So here I'm um, taking the cross-section. Uh, you can see that uh, I've got a, a radius and thickness and these are my uh, values. And I'm basically going to use that radius to drive um, a gusset or a, or a um, stiffening plate uh, in that connection. But I'm just going to turn the sphere off so it just makes it a little bit. Um, oh, I already had a sphere there. <clears throat> uh, so you, you defined cross section uh, in Caramba, right? Uh, all the profiles so you can retrieve all this information here in Idea Statica afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. <clears throat> Uh, what you'll see, what you're seeing here is, um, if I turn off the the Karamba view, uh, we also do have um, we have the the preview of the um, of the model or um, uh, coming from our our um, plugin as well. So um, and that makes it a little bit clearer. So what I'm doing here is. Um, uh, is is getting the connection point and basically I, i'm using grasshopper to generate this this gusset plate um gusset mm -hmm. plate outline um and i can obviously use the um, cross-section diameter to to start to um you know play around with how this plate is um, generated um uh, the other thing i'm doing here is i am um wanting to cut some of these members a little bit shorter so i'm creating some some cut planes um as well but all of this geometry is is based off the off the incoming model basically so i'm creating a, a an outline for this plate um, and then this is all grasshopper geometry obviously and then we have a whole bunch of components which are allowing for um, the creation of open model objects in grasshopper so you can see here i'm creating a, a creating a plate I can give that plate a, a thickness. Um, I can define uh, material, um, and I can also define uh, weld properties, um, mm -hmm. and also the cuts between the members. So um, there's a whole bunch of things that I can define here, and Grasshopper quickly allows you to to create these relationships, basically. So um, once I've defined all those things, I can uh, modify my original connection point um, that came from the uh, from the original conversion of IOM, and then you can see now if I go to the deconstruct um, connection point, you can see that this connection point now has the plates in it. It now has um, a whole bunch of cuts in it as well, mm -hmm. um, and I can um, update that open model. Um, so now I have an open model which has um, two connections that have been um, populated with um, connection information, um, and I could ex I could export this open model to my XML format to import into to Checkbot or whatnot, mm -hmm. or I can create a connection file directly um, inside Grasshopper. So um, now we're kind of going to the connection components. Um, and you can see here, I have a create connection from, from IOM. Uh, I put in my open model. 
and I provide the, the two connection points that I wanting to, to create. Uh, I can activate that. Uh, so what it's doing is it's converting, uh, it's, it's selecting the, the connections, it's getting the um, open model. Oh, and it's also actually going to calculate <laughs> the calculate the connection um, mm -hmm. downstream as well because I think I have that uh, have that selected. Um, so the the calculate connection uh, will probably take a little bit. So basically speaking, you can uh, just generate this plate uh, with all the cuts, all the wealth, and send it directly to Idea Statica. Uh, when you do it manually, I can imagine that it will lots of work with the. Uh, all the cuts and the welds and i imagine that if you change one of the angle of one of the steel so you have to do everything manually again <laughs> exactly if a member size changes you have to readjust mm -hmm. the plate you know based on the um if you know if you've got um, the weld length um, based on the uh, size of the cross section mm -hmm. or the um, the plate positioning is as per the incoming member um, so I'll just quickly open and show you that file that I've created. Uh, but basically, once we get to this point, now we have what we call uh, like a, a connection object. So this is an object that is in the is in um, is a connection, and we can start to uh, modify this or uh, yeah calculate it. Um, we actually, are I know you're not running the calculation, but um, we can yeah. Um, use the connection um, API components to start to start to do to some of this stuff. Um, uh, still coming up. Uh, in the meantime, we have a, a question. Is it possible to populate specific geometry direct, directly from Grasshopper without a previous Caramba model? Uh, question from Ricardo. Yeah, so um, the, you can um, basically uh, either import an IOM file or you can create one from SAF or you can create an IOM absolutely from scratch. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously the component here, um, create open model. So you can create um, a brand new one from scratch. You can add members to it. You can create connection mm -hmm. points um, without needing a, a previous um, uh, a previous file or FEA um, thing. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Or I don't think I even opened it. Um, I have also one, so one more question of, about yeah. the just just before it will load. Uh, are the loads also in, uh, integrated in the open model? Uh, yes, exactly. So. Um, you can kind of see when I uh, when I imported from SAF, I got my um, open model result, and then I can actually pass uh, that result uh, to that create mm -hmm. connection from IOM component as well. Um, uh, so they are um, available, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll show you this. I, I didn't actually click open before, but hopefully it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> coming now. Uh, so as, 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 you can, um, as you can see, everything is live. So uh, everything has, has updated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Here we have the connection. Yeah, so we've got the connection which has been generated. The plate's looking a little bit off, but I think I, I might have modified it a little bit. And you can see here we have um, we have the load effect. So we have the load effects on on that connection um, basically. Um, but we can obviously um, play around with this geometry uh, or, or or whatnot as we want. Um, and we can also run the calculation inside of inside of Grasshopper. Mm -hmm. So I'll just close that. Um, um, but I guess the power of this is not is is kind of the ability to um, uh, not just not just do one connection, but also you know this this same logic applies to mm -hmm. obviously this connection as well. You can see that it's got differing number of members, um, but the logic is the same. Um, I could also you know do this um, 
and do this one as well. Uh, I could also probably do the, the two bottom ones as well. So, um, and also this logic applies when I have an, another geometry that's similar. So I just import, you know, the new SAF model, it would recreate the those connections and I can sort of start to, I guess, automate the way I'm working um, or uh, with, you know, with the, the, a similar type of, a similar type of structure mm -hmm. using the logic that I've created in, um, in Grasshopper. Yeah, really cool example. Uh, I really like it. So I think people will see this power of uh, of this connection in like when you can take the same logic and from one connection to and apply it to another. Yeah, exactly. Um, kind of running a little bit low on time, so maybe I'll, I can jump to um, jump to uh, the other. Uh, example I have yeah. I, 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 yeah. if we have time I'll show the um, the template example but um, the other, let's, the go other... To, let's go to another example yeah yeah sounds good so um, the other example I was going to show was 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 this one um, and basically what what we have here is where we might have basically a, an idea static connection file um, Obviously, this connection file is quite complex. It's spatial, mm. and uh, this this particular project there was about two hundred of these connection files um, oh, no. in the project, um, and generating the plates um, uh, manually is a very difficult and time-consuming process. Um, but we had all the connection files generated with all the loads and all the geometry, um, so. Uh, what we were able to do um, uh, using this uh, using this plugin was actually uh, we can reference a connection. So we can reference an existing connection, um, and then we can take the open model from that, and then we can start to visualize, I guess, the connections, uh, the connection members and stuff, and um, start to generate some of this complex um, plate geometry. Mm -hmm. um, as well with this, we had um, we we also uh, uh, automating the logical um, cut operations. Um, so obviously, this member needs to, you know there's there's a logical um, process in how the the cuts are generated. Um, and then with this particular one, what we can actually do uh, in the connection um, plugin, we have what we call a component called update from IOM. So uh, in this instance, we can actually take an existing connection file um, and we can kind of push those operations back in um, into that file. Uh, and what we can do is we can um, uh, save as as a new file, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can provide a suffix and the component will basically take the existing one, push the new operations in and, and save out um, uh, save out another one. Yeah, I really so like this. That. I really like this example because it shows that you don't have to like be Caramba or Grasshopper super user to create your old uh, structure model in uh, Grasshopper, but you can take already existing that is already created and just take it and make some modification, make some maybe difficult stuff, and just uh, save a new file, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's it's kind of more um, bulk bulk processing of things so uh, we use the same script here to um, to run through all those uh, connection files that had been generated um, and then uh, also we created another script that re-referenced the updated files and then run the calculation for for all of them so mm -hmm. you can start to um, I guess modulate modulate these things uh, as well uh, um, uh, which kind of helps with some of the um, processing processing power uh, as well, yeah. and and especially and especially when you have two hundred this kind of connection on your on your project, so you can see the savings. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, we have a question in the meantime. Which version of Idea uh, Idea support the API? Yeah, so any version after um, twenty one point zero. Um, mm -hmm. should support the API, um, but we do um, recommend to kind of update 
um, to the to the latest versions because we're always kind of adding features. Um, so the the plugin will work um, with I guess the the older versions, um, but it will take what whichever latest version you have. Um, but some of the components may not work depending on whether mm -hmm. that API functionality was um, was was added at that at that particular time or or not. Uh, would you like to show some uh, uh, some of the presentation, uh, or should we jump to question? Maybe you have some something more to to show. Uh, I guess the last thing I kind of wanted to show um, is just the, is is the the possibility of a template um, template application. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, sure. Just show it. So so in um, in the Idea Statica connection application now. Um, we have what we call um, parameters, um, and what that allows uh, the user to do is start to set up um, some parameters that can drive um, a previously designed connection, basically. So, um, in this um, in this connection, we have uh, this gus a gusset plate uh, gusset plate operation, and we have a width and a depth um, in the UI. Um, but we might want to use, I guess, the API to drive to drive that. So we can use parameters for that. Uh, and you can kind of see here if I if I change that um, value, it changes it. Um, and I can export that as a as a template um, that I want to apply to, I guess, a whole bunch of nodes. And um, I'll just quickly show um, how this can be done in in uh, in the app. So here we're using the same um, the same technique as as importing, but here we're going to import a, an IOM file directly. Um, again, we're sort of uh, getting the connections, uh, uh, and we're choosing uh, choosing some connections to create. But here we've just created um, the naked connections. We haven't defined any plates or anything in uh, Idea Static uh, or IOM. Uh, so what we uh, what we do allow is um, for the application of uh, a template, and I'll see if this uh, this might not actually be working anymore. Uh, maybe some uh, idea statica model are open. Um, no, I, can... I, actually, I I need to hit the old uh, the old play button. <laughs> Um, and so what this is going to do is it, it's going to create those um, uh, the four connections that I've um, uh, I've selected that I want to apply the template to, and it's going to uh, apply that um, template to them in using uh, in Idea Statica. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually view that geometry in Grasshopper as well. So um, just give one second. So now it's model updating or it's recalculating uh, the model. Yeah, so basically it's it's creating the connections, it's applying the template, it's applying the templates, it's extracting the geometry um, for each of those, and yeah, so uh, you can sort of see here it's um, I, I've I've provided the uh, the template path. Mm -hmm. um, I've applied the template, and you can see the geometry of that template, which has come into mm -hmm. um, into Grasshopper, and you can see that it's been applied to these four connections. Uh, and what I can do is I can actually get out those parameters. So um, uh, I can see which parameters are available uh, in the in the each each connection now. Um, so plate width or, or plate depth. And for instance, I could, uh, you know, I could change this uh, parameter if the plate is is too um, looking too big, or, mm -hmm. or whatever, or it's not big enough, or um, the thickness isn't right. Um, and then I can start to modify that directly inside Grasshopper and kind of get that real time feedback on on the geometry. Um, so this is kind of using the new parameters interface. Um, uh, and basically, what it's doing is it's, it's um, importing the connection, applying that template, modifying the connection, and I can also start to run, uh, I guess, the calculations in line, um, in line as well, or view that geometry. So, 
that's uh, that's another kind of workflow that's um, if you already have, I guess, those operations or things defined, um, you can you can use that as well here. Cool, uh, great examples. I think like lots of people really like this free example that you that you presented. So maybe let's go to some question. Make Q and A session. I see that Adam, uh, Adam uh, answer lots of them, but we can still have some time so we can answer. Uh, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nathan. Uh, just before uh, Q and A uh, session, uh, I really. Uh, I would like to invite you for next uh, Learn Grasshopper live session. Uh, in uh, four weeks, we are going to talk about advanced structure engineering in the in GSA Oasis. I, I suppose that uh, Idea Statica is has this connection with uh, Oasis, right? Oasis, right, Nathan? Uh, it's something we. I think there is um, something. I think we're we're kind of. Um, talking with Oasis at the moment to try and get a, a more um, uh, a more robust checkbot link um, hmm. for, for GSA working, yeah. Yeah, so this will be the next one. And of course, uh, there will be also about tech class structures uh, because uh, this is the software mainly used for modeling. So maybe we can also introduce a little bit about how to use tech class structure for creating connection. So for everyone interested in the new live sessions about these topics or want to learn a Grasshopper, uh, I always recommend to go to learngrasshopper.com and sign up for free mailing uh, when I'm trying to introduce Grasshopper from scratch. Uh, and you can also download this guide that uh, it was already downloaded more than 12,000 times, five steps to learn Grasshopper. And uh, so here, uh, you will going to get the tips and tricks, but also invitations for the ne next live session. Okay, let's go to Q and A uh, session. Uh, let's start from the uh, from the top. Uh, let's say from Anthony. Hello, I have the main uh, and beam uh, column and some loads, and I need to plot bending and shear diagrams, and also find the optimal section for the main beam. So I can do this on uh, Idea Statica. Uh, is this related to a connection? Um, I, I think so. I think so. If we have some load, so. Yeah, so I mean, definitely once the connection file is generated, um, you can either set up a parameter um, for, the, for the section size. Um, and you can start to uh, use the parameter to, to automate, say, changing of those section sizes to find the optimal um, section. So you can you can start to loop or use the parameter interface to, to change yeah, cross sections. And um, and you could do this in Grasshopper as well on, for a single connection that you, you want to um, do the optimization on. Cool. Next one. Can IOM read by any software? Um, it it could be <laughs> if someone wanted to write the uh, write the import for it. Um, the the documentation is um, free and available online, and also the um, the modules that allow, I guess, the the XML import. Um, but I would say that um, there's not too many software that actually support it now at the moment. And kind of as I said, it, it's used as a mechanism. Um, for us to generate models specifically in Idea Statica. Um, and typically we're trying to convert with the more um, open formats, um, mm -hmm. such as SAF, um, which are more widely used in the industry. Um, and you know, we, we try and um, do the, that conversion to IOM, which, which um, is a bit more beneficial for, for software vendors um, and other, you know, other engineers out there as well. Um, yeah, hope that more software vendors will go in this direction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about the Abacus? Uh, do, you, do you have experience in that? Do you have any connection between Idea, Idea Statica and Abacus? Uh, we don't actually have a, a, um, a connection with it, um, so, so to speak. I mean, you could write your own if you wanted to. Um, we kind of feel that Abacus is kind of, it's, um, uh it's not something that your everyday engineer is using and it's mainly it's it's probably used for 
very, very sophisticated um, models. Um, and we uh, we would kind of, um, uh, I guess, um, we, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> um, we kind of use it for some of our verifications and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so, I mean, it's an interesting question, um, but I'd have to kind of get back to you on kind of what we do have available for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Caramba uh, uh, Idea, uh, because it was the name of the plugin before, uh, does it replace that the plugin that you showed now or is it still called Caramba Idea? Um, yeah, so they are different plugins. Um, so okay. Karamba Idea was um, developed by Rayan Ajus. Um, and I know a lot of people are using it. And it, um, we kind of are trying to use, I guess, the the SAF format to sort of generate, to, to do that conversion um, between Karamba um, and I guess Idea Statica. Um, you know, if you're using Karamba Idea or you've used it in the past to generate connection files, um, it can be used in conjunction with our plugin, basically. So um, once those connection files are generated, we can use our our plugin to kind of modify or or, or add um, operations and stuff. The Cumber Idea plugin was um, mainly used only for that template workflow that I showed um, mm -hmm. showed last, and uh, we kind of uh, found that a lot of people were really wanting that geometry um you know the geometry visualization and creation of of the complex um uh, geometry so that's kind of where our plugin is really mm -hmm. um trying to focus cool uh is it possible to create loads in grasshopper uh or is it always have to be different software can you create loads uh, like ba basically speaking like i'm just thinking about this question like you just provide an uh, excel arc with the coordinates of the points and the loads direction. So basically speaking, you can generate, but maybe you have all also answer for that. Uh, you can generate, you can um, create like uh, result, um, result files. Um, and there's actually an example um, uh, when you download the plugin for creating those result files, but I'd be um, interested to hear exactly what, um, what, what, uh, uh, what their meaning uh, meaning of that question is. Uh, so I definitely um, suggest writing it on our GitHub and, and we can sort of discuss it further. But the, the simple answer is it, it is possible um, in Grasshopper to, to generate res, um, results or internal forces. Yeah, here we have a quite long question, but maybe we can uh, we can answer that. Idea Statica accepts the loads at the end of each element. However, the loads from the finite element model refer to the node. So an experienced user of Statica knows that the loads from the model might need to be adjusted. So the question is, is there a way to streamline, streamline the workflow, geometry loads when using Grasshopper? Um, using Grasshopper, you can, um, I guess, explicitly define anything that you want and how you want to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that would kind of be the, the, the simple answer. Um, the way that our results work is we provide, I guess, the the, the FEM model um, results at, at points along the beam. And we actually take those results and can and convert those to the forces on the members mm. um, in connection. Um, so if there's something specific um, uh, or if the, the results need to be modified in a certain way, then you can do that in Grasshopper. Um, uh, um, so that, that is possible. Um, uh, or I, I would suggest um, checking the, the workflow with Checkbot to see whether um, how those forces are imported. Um, I didn't actually show the slide on Checkbot, um, but basically you can import the, the FEM uh, results and you can view how, visualize them in, in I guess, our Checkbot application and see um, how they directly convert to, to con con connection forces. Um, hmm. Cool. Uh, how do I access the available commands with Grasshopper API? Or do we have a component library? 
uh, you just need a um, uh, is this not using the components I'm guessing uh, mm -hmm. so the um, the idea statica API is available um, via a NuGet package so if you not, not don't want to use grasshopper components um, the the wrapper that I have written um, to to um, create the components uh, is available to, but it's not I guess a, a fully documented API um, and if it's a question about just using the components that are available then all you need is a idea statica um, license basically um, mm -hmm. that has API functionality Cool. Uh, let me see. Uh, I have a really uh, nice question. Where the idea statica development heading? Uh, maybe it's more qu personal question or your work question. Is it going to evolving into becoming a full finite element based three D modeling tool? Uh, what is your maybe? Uh, it's more about you, not about idea statica. What 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 about development into Grasshopper and Beam uh, uh, team where you are working? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think like what we're really focused on is um, really uh, enabling the the design of the of the detail. Those really hard aspects of structural engineering, where you're spending um, a lot of time doing hand calculations, trying to figure out um, you know assumptions to to be able to design something such, such as a structural connection or like a really complex um, concrete uh, detail or something like that. And that's um, that's that's always been our focus, and that will be um, our focus going forward. Um, in the BIM team, we're really constant. We're really focused on trying to make interoperability as quick and um, as painless as possible, um, and to really be able to, I guess, manage those larger larger structures. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you know grouping and, and all that sort of stuff and that that's probably going to be the i guess the next the next the next thing for us to kind of um tackle in the bim team so really really focus on those automated um types of of the time consuming things that uh um yeah that are happening in in engineering at the moment we have lots of questions do you nathan do you have still five minutes to answer um uh... We have yeah, all, no problem. Uh, we have we have still three hundred people. So uh, we have Joanna from uh, I think Fem Design. Uh, hi. It seems uh, quicker in most cases to work with predefined templates, as you shown on the last example. I, I assume. In what situation would you model directly in Grasshopper instead of creating a template? Because you showed like these two uh, two ways of working. Yeah, um, it's kind of. Um... I guess where you know that you uh, kind of, as, as I presented in that slide um, on the two options, where, where you have geometry that is really difficult to define um, via the local coordinate system of a member. And in that spatial um, connection, you, you see that there's two members coming in, but the plate geometry is dependent on some um, you know some average of the of the vector directions so it's really difficult to model that i guess in idea statica um so i would so that is where you have to basically use grasshopper so that's one instance and then where you've got logic um uh, more members or, or differing number of members um in a connection where you want the same logic but um you might the list lengths might be different, so applying a template in that situation is actually quite difficult um, because it's hard for us to to understand um, what should go where. Basically, the template is mm -hmm. defi defined by a number of members. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm bombarding you with the questions, so I hope you keep, are keep, not tired. Keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> give me more. Give Give me more. Is it possible to evaluate similar similar connection in order to apply the same type of connection for the other one? Um, it's possible to evaluate similar connection in order to apply the same connection type for the other ones. Um, I'm not sure if this is in re regards to sort of. Um, uh, grouping or um, the template application oh okay so is this like yeah i think this is um grouping so at the moment 
in the Grasshopper plugin, we're kind of leaving it up to the user. Um, as you sort of saw, there was kind of, we just spit out a list of connections, um, but you can deconstruct that connection point to like figure out, you know, how many members are in that connection, um, what are the member sizes in that connection, um, and we're kind of making it general generalized to allow Grasshopper users to to figure out their the best way that they um, want to create that uh, or to do that sort of dispatching of of different um, connections. Uh, it's something that we are looking at in terms of how um, best to group or um, you know provide different options to allow connection grouping for template application and, and stuff like that. So but at the moment, it's it's a very general solution. Uh, we're leaving it up to the user to kind of come up with their their way of uh, logically, um, uh, I guess, splitting groups apart and stuff mm. like that. Uh, what about the robot? Uh, question from Hendra. Will the IOMM model will be created with the robot add-in? Yeah, so as I said, um, every connection that we every checkbot link that we have available creates an IOM so if you go into the folder that's created when that checkbot model is created there's a there's an IOM file in there uh, it's called import.xml um, and that file can be imported into grasshopper kind of as I showed with that template application um, so you could you know for instance if you've got a hundred connections that are very simple and you don't need to use Grasshopper for it or you don't want to, you've got a couple, you can import um, the certain connections using that IOM file and then generate the geometry in Grasshopper um, if you like. Uh, let me see. Uh, here is an interesting question. Can we view the result from of Idea Statica in, back in Rhine and Grasshopper? Uh, we only have a text-based viewing at the moment. Um, okay. So, for instance, you can you can um, you can run the calculation and you can get results back, but we're not providing like a um, a visual uh, visualization of the results in Rhino. Uh, the user can obviously um, uh, set that up themselves if they want to, um, but you you can obviously get whether the connection has passed or failed. Um, but it's up to the user at the moment to do that visualization. Uh, we don't have it available um, in the current plugin. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Okay. Should we take the last question? Uh, let me see. I will uh, here. Um, here I can. I think you, you, we already answered that. Can we grab geometry from Idea Statica and modify in Grasshopper and back in Idea Statica? Yes, we, uh, Nathan, show it in the example. Maybe this one uh, from Yannick. When importing from a SAF file, uh, how does the open model treat forces on nodes? Does it does this result in out of balance forces with loads, not in equilibrium? Uh, forces on nodes. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, uh, it sh should. Um, Forces on nodes are really difficult to um, <laughs> to um, take into account. Um, I believe they may result in forces um, not in, in equilibrium due to the, um, uh, but I think that's just a, that's a sort of a common thing um, with the with the way that we're transferring forces at the moment. Um, uh, so I hope that does answer that that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we are already uh, after 3 p.m. Central European time. So we have lots of comments. Good job. Thank you for the content from Adrella. Uh, we have uh, Gianluca. Thanks. Uh, lots of good contact, content. Thank you very much for being a guest. And yeah, uh, as, as we said, we are for those who registered on learngoshopper.com. We are going to send the PDF from the presentation and uh, one of the examples, right, uh, with the Grasshopper file. I'm not sure which one you you decided to send. Is it a spatial connection or which you are going to share? Uh, I'll share the two um, the two bigger ones. The spatial connection okay. is is available with the plugin as it, right now, so um, people can 
can can download that and and get that example right now so okay again thank you adam thank you very much for your all support i see that you wrote tons of answer and comments i think everyone uh, everyone is satisfied with the answer we have marco uh, we have frederico thanks a lot great presentation yeah lots of good comments you, you made a good uh, good job and uh, i'm really uh, uh, I really admiring how you answer all of these questions. Like, I, I, I can spend one hour, next one hour, just asking your question, and you, without any pa pause, you can answer all of them. So, thank well, you I, again yeah. very much. And yeah, maybe uh, if you are guys interested in some of the trainings about Idea Statica and Grasshopper, so you also you can just reach me and go or reach uh, idea uh, statica support so maybe we can uh, think about it so maybe it will be interest right yeah so we have our github um which has a rhino and grasshopper um thread um in, in a discussion forum so i'd um encourage people to jump on there and and ask questions and and whatnot um and then you know we can we can we can answer them Sure. Okay. Thank you, Nathan, very much. And yeah, see you in the next uh, 